Hello. How's everybody doing this awesome wet Friday morning? Pretty wet. <laughs> uh, if it's uh, raining, ooh, ooh, Esther, waiting, waiting, waiting for the second part. Hey, good morning to you. Nisa, hope you're having an awesome Raya. Emma, also good morning. I see you are on time today. Yeah, thank you for making it. Uh, guys, I really appreciate you following the series, the Leadership Live series, and as well as actually the Change series. Hi, Upper Kaba Shidi. How's it going, coach? Whoa, nice gang, nice. So those of you who are excited to rock and roll, today's topic we're going to talk about, uh, we're, we're in the change series, guys. And so yesterday, those of you who were here, um, we talked a little bit about motivation. So in making any change, yeah, uh, it is four part. The first part is motivation. So anybody can tell me what we learned about motivation yesterday? Boleh ingat tak? Those are familiar names. Uh, huh? Let me choose names. Uh. Volunteer, volunteer. <laughs> Esther, you were here yesterday. <laughs> You're making the rainy day, making the rainy wet day dry. Oh, bringing the sun out, is it? Thank you, Esther. <laughs> I see it good. I'm glad you're fine. All right, that's awesome. And so if you talk, remember what we talked about motivation. Motivation is about having the energy. It's about the, having the energy to be able to push through. And the energy is good. So for some people, the energy is the emotion. The, the emotion. And emotion can be both resourceful and unresourceful. And we learned, we learned that yesterday because um, motivation is uh, a form of energy. Motivation is emotion. And the thing about emotion is that it can go up, it can go come down. So what do you do when it's up? Wow, macam banyak power. There's a lot of power to do stuff. But when it's down, oh dear, what do we do? So those are some very good discussions, guys. If you missed it, go and check out the live yesterday. Yay, able to join this morning. Awesome. I'm so glad. Thank you, Emma. Great. And I noticed that you shared this live, yesterday's live as well. So great. Thank you very much for doing that. So, gang, let me just uh, uh, run into today's session, yeah? Oh, my gosh. I can feel the love. I can feel the excitement. Guys, uh, if you can hear me loud and clear, please send me some love. Give me some hearts. Send me some thumbs up. Give me a hug. You know, we've got the new icon now. So, give me a bit of that, gang. Send me some of that love so that we can rock and roll. And if you're excited to rock and roll, guys, can I hear your exclamation point? Dun, 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 dun. Can you give me exclamation points to tell me that you're excited to rock and roll today? Now, now this is not easy for me. Susah sangat because usually I love to do seminars when I boleh nampak. I can see you guys. I can see your smiles. I can see your faces. I can see you take notes. But now I can't see all that. So I need to, I need to rely on the chat box here. So everything that you type in there, gang, is coming through so uh please please do that please comment please below you faham something you understand something just write it down put it into the comment box and everybody else can learn what you learn as well so by all means do that all right so as we go running in guys uh today we're going to talk a lot about um something very interesting called change okay so uh okay <laughs> woohoo emma thank you anisa esther woo keep those exclamation points coming nice thank you very much gang so today we're going to talk a lot about the change series and as we get into the change series guys um what we're going to talk about today is how do we make effective decisions that you don't regret and and if i may uh, uh, I want to I want to challenge you to think about this. Okay, hey, how is it, Captain Cole? Nice to see you. I bought a new notebook just to jot down from our lives. Oh my gosh, Emma! Ah! <laughs> so happy to hear that. All right, thank you. I love notebooks as well. I'm a notebook geek. Yeah, when I go into the stationery shop, right, I come up with like eight notebooks. Whether I use them is another thing. And usually, I have my favorite colored pens. All right, so I hope you have your favorite colored pens, guys. Uh, like Emma, you're writing down all of your notes as well. Okay, so let me ask you this question, okay? Now, how many of you have made a decision, okay, and um, you regretted it, okay? If you've made a decision and regretted, 
ada macam ayah menyesal there's a bit of regret there uh, give me a why like yes why for yes yes god got some regrets and that's okay that's okay uh, let let me know yeah um and for those of you who put yes all right i want you to in your notebook i want you to write down what did you regret what did you do that you regretted okay i want you to write it down in your notebook it's up to you if you want to share it out here but what did you do that you regretted okay now the next thing i want you guys to think about all right the next thing i want you to think about is have any of you okay uh, regretted not doing something. Ah, that was very interesting. If you've actually regretted anything that you did not do, all right? If you regret something that you did not get to do, put N. Put an N for me. Ah, let, let's see. Okay, <laughs> that's the why. <laughs> okay, now, 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 if I may, the reason why I'm doing this is that I want you to reflect because a lot of time when we regret something, uh, it's not because we regret something that we did. Usually, we regret something that we did not do. That is very interesting about human beings is because a lot of time, the 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 regret comes from uh, not, uh, not uh, doing something yeah, because we took action, but it's not doing something, all right? So let's jump into today's uh, uh, awesome topic where we talk a little bit about uh, how these decisions are made, all right? So let me get into my screen. Okay, so if I, if I, if I may, first, top, first thing to talk about is getting the perfect decision is impossible. So for some of us, uh, how many of us during MCO, we had some difficult decisions to make? Uh, for example, I think a lot of our uh, clients that we had to deal with, hey, Annie, nice that you could make it, awesome. Steph, yeah, woo, all right, great, great, great. Love, love, love having you guys here. Great morning, great wet morning. Hopefully the sun comes up again. And one of the things that I would really like to talk about here is the perfect decision. How some people have this thing called uh, um, paralysis by analysis. Why? Because they're waiting for the perfect decision, the perfect and the right decision. Now, does that exist? And if I may, I really love what... Um, I'll just make this a little bit bigger. If you can see, I really love what Tony Robbins talked about because a lot of people try to be perfect. They're trying to make this perfect um, decision. And there are no such thing as perfect decisions. Why? Because perfection, and I want you to underline that if you can, perfection is the lowest standard in the world. Why is it the lowest standard? Is because it does not exist. It does not exist. Perfect means there's nothing wrong. There is zero uh, problems, zero imperfections, zero uh, mistakes. No. So if, if I could, what you want to be is not perfect. You want to be outstanding. And so this is very, very important because a lot of people strive for perfection and perfection is the lowest standard because it does not exist. Adrian, how is it going? Hello, hello. All right. Now, another very important uh, thing to also realize, and I know I covered a little bit of this in our last uh, our last session yesterday is that there's no right and wrong decision. No right and wrong decision. Why? Because the uh, uh, when you feel you're making a wrong decision, okay, it's merely feedback. All it is is it is feedback. It is feedback for how you can. So it's the sounds. So right or wrong decision, it is not the end of the world. It's just making sounds and. I want to tell you a story about uh, 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 one of our CEOs. Okay, let's name him Andy for now. Uh, he's a really interesting guy, but when he 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 got the coach on board, he said, okay, the number one thing is I want to uh, design all the KPIs for all my staff. So he runs a manufacturing facility. So he said, okay, that's the first thing he wants to do. Lo and behold, nine months into the program, he was still dragging his feet. So he's designed everything. He's put everything together, and he was still... Mm, didn't implement the KPI. So and then and then so finally the coach asked him, you know, uh, what what happened, you know? And he said, oh, you know, if I implement the KPI, I am takut, I am afraid uh, that you know my employees might leave because 
um, they haven't had KPIs, you know, they work with me for 10 years, they have not, and you know, they might ask me for more OT over time. And then, so I said all these fears. So at the end of the day, he, he did not implement the KPIs in time and people started leaving because they didn't know how much to perform. They also didn't know how much of an increment was necessary. They would get from this company if they work hard or didn't work hard, they delivered, didn't deliver. So it wasn't clear. So what became a, a, a decision he feared was wrong became no decision. So he didn't have a decision. So if I could, and I want, to, I want you to write this down, sometimes more often than not, um, between a right and a wrong decision, what can be worse is no decision. How many of you know what I'm talking about? Sometimes no decision, when you're dragging your feet about something, that can end up uh, creating consequences that, are, uh, uh, that, that can create so many domino effects. Yeah, and of course, if I may, uh, no decision is a is 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 also a decision, <laughs> right or wrong is also a decision. If I may, right. So this is very very uh, very important, the right and the wrong. And then there's also a facet of people that do the should have, would have, could have. All right. So this is really interesting because uh, those of you who um, were in uh, Asia Works or in Money and You. Uh, these are really awesome life development programs. Yeah, I've uh, been for several of them. And they talk about people that like to do the, the should have, would have, could have. So there are some people that they make decisions uh, and, and, you know, reflect on some of this on your own because when they make the decisions, they go back and they look at those decisions and they go, ah, yeah, at the time, uh, I should have done this. Ah, yeah, at the time, uh, I could have done that. Actually, uh, if things happen differently, uh, I would have done something else. So the should have, would have, could have are very, um, are, 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 are very toxic. Why? Because sometimes people stay in that period of time in the past where they are, they are questioning all the different alternatives that they could have taken back then. Okay. Now that's, that's toxic. Now, why is that toxic and it's not resourceful? Why? I mean, if you do that for a while by questioning all your different alternatives back then, that could have helped you. But however, what, what would have been better? What is a, a, a more resourceful way of doing that is asking yourself, instead of should have, would have, could have, you can ask yourself, what do you appreciate about your decision? What did you learn about the decision? What did you learn about the good parts of the decision and the poor parts, the bad parts of the decision? There are going to be pros and cons. What did you learn from it versus continue to simulate in your mind all the possible ways that it could have been done, should have been done, would have been done. Ouch. So some people are in that space. Remember to bring yourself forward uh, instead of stay there stuck, okay? So, okay. So uh, those of you who don't already know me, thank you very much. In fact, I think I know most of you here. I see some new names. Thank you very much for being here, yeah? Um, my name is Marissa, and basically I'm the CEO and the founder of uh, the Spark Group Asia. Basically, um, I grow my team and my team of coaches, leadership intelligence coaches. We work with uh, leaders and entrepreneurs like you to help you to grow your business. Uh, and some of you are also in leadership positions where, you know, you're the head of department or you're a senior manager or, or you're probably even a new manager and you want to you want to go further. So we work with uh, teams like yourself uh, to uh, and leaders and entrepreneurs to grow themselves so that the, the business becomes easier to run. Now, we work on one very important facet. The very important facet is that, you know, sometimes there are a lot of external strategies. You know, there's a lot of things that we need to do out there, but we need to have internal clarity, the internal resources clarity of our mental maps this needs to make sense so that we're able to implement the external strategies. All right. Hey, good morning there, Suto Siang. Wow, I missed you. Nice. Nice to have you here. All right. Good stuff. So a lot of what we do is to align the external strategies that you do with the inner resources that you be. And that mindset drives a lot more positive change than just doing because sometimes it is not long term if you're just doing it at the action level. Like that man that I told you, the CEO, Andy, we came up with KPIs and we were 
ready to rock and roll, but he dragged it for nine months. Now, so coming up with the KPIs, designing it, calculating it, and putting it all into documents, that's not the the problem. In fact, all that, that that stuff is very doable. The challenge is what was his fear, the mindset. Ah, and you see, that took a long time to work out. Most entrepreneurs are like that. That's why we do what we call leadership intelligence coaching to help people to move on, to help people to realize, actually, I can get more sales. I can grow my business. I can. And all of these are strategies that are on Google, on YouTube. And if you join any of our workshops, we'll teach you how to do stuff like that. But if I may, um, sometimes the internal blockages, it just doesn't make sense. And for some of it, it, when it doesn't make sense, ladies and gentlemen, it's something that happened in the past. And those were the programs that we were running in the past and it worked for us. So it worked for me to be this kind of person in the past. But now I bring that same programs today and it doesn't work anymore. Or probably it needs adjustments. And so those are the kinds of uh, adjustments that we do. So a quick commercial, guys. Uh, some of you have also attended the 28th May yesterday session. That's why you couldn't attend my session. Uh, thank you very much, team, for making it bigger. The 28th May, 5th June and 12th of June is where we actually teach you the skill of coaching. So a lot of people uh, over time have asked, you know, I want to grow my team. Um, and my team of employees need to take on more so that as a leader, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, I can do more of other things that are high dollar in value. But I want to make sure my team does more, takes over the responsibilities on behalf of the organization. And if that's where you're at. Uh, enabling the skill of coaching in every leader, we actually teach you frameworks. So this is very powerful frameworks. You will be learning nine core coaching skills. Yeah, uh, A lot of the core coaching skills is number one, asking questions, building business plans, co-creating strategies, just to name a few. All of that are there. Uh, and if you are listening to this right now, gang, I want you to load that link, the sparkgroup.asia employee whisperer, load that and key in this promotional code leadership. And we will hive off 60% of 60% um, uh, of the entry fee right off the bat. Hey, ha, huh? very, very good. Carmen, wow, nice to see you. That's two days in a row, huh? Nice, nice, nice. Uh, I love you guys. You're so keen on learning. Great stuff. Yes, I agree. Old styles of strategies won't work well in the modern world. Absolutely. Thank you, Suto Siang. If I may, a lot of the strategies that used to work, you know, in, in the business world, a lot of time we, we, we ask these questions around, hey, you know, something that have worked, you know, 30 years ago doesn't work today. And then an, uh, an entrepreneur said this to me, you know what? Things that used to work five years ago doesn't work today. Now, that's very, very interesting. It's so interesting that um, even the tools of trade, Facebook is for the elderly generation. And I say elderly generation is how old are you? I are so panic, you know. I use Facebook one. Ma. Oh, uh, 30s onwards, 40s uh, will use Facebook one. Huh? So all the teenagers, the young ones, uh, I say, oh, we are all with IG now, Instagram. I'm like, oh, really? <laughs> I didn't know that. So these are a lot of things that we're having to go with the flow. Woohoo, Emma, absolutely. So if I may, guys, if you want to learn more about what we do, please join us. Uh, please log on to this page, uh, the sparkgroup.asia slash events, and go right ahead and log right in. So we're going to talk about decisions today. Let me jump in, gang. Um, I, I, I love uh, today's topic. I really love today's topic because sometimes I feel people just get so stuck, you know, um, People get stuck with making decisions because uh, more often than not, people get so worried and caught up with uh, uh, many, uh, and making decisions is not really much outside. It's all in here, okay? So my job today as a coach is to show you how people make decisions and all the different things that can help you to consider so that you don't, uh, regret those decisions because the last thing you want is to regret something that you've done or you did not do. Okay. So, wow. All right. So if you can look at my screen, guys, you'll see on the left-hand side, somebody holding a compass, which is 
uh, uh, okay, somebody holding a compass for now. And then after that, on the other right-hand side, you will see a landscape, which is the sun, the trees, the birds, the, the grass, everything. Okay. So if I may, there are two ways that you can make decisions. And I want you to write this down. There are two ways that you can make decisions. Okay. Is that the first way of making a decision is the first type of people. When they make decisions, they go internal. So they internalize the decision. They go in and they ask themselves. So they go in and they ask themselves, what do they want? Okay. The external decision, externalized, the type of people that externalize decisions, when something needs to be made as a decision, their approach is to go and ask other people first. Okay. So this is a form of intelligence as well. So when we need to make a decision, do you go inside or do you externalize? Now, this is very important. So for example, if somebody asks you, what do you want to eat for dinner? Nak ma uh, malam ini mau makan apa? Right? What do you want to eat? All right. Some people will go, mm, I want to eat chicken rice, you know, or some people, they'll ask, they'll ask every, so they don't have their own answer yet. They'll ask everybody first what they want to eat and then they'll make their own decision. Okay. So this is very important because as we make decisions in business, okay, not making decision for our dinner, when we're making decision for business, okay, people who are too far externalized, okay, they can make decisions that are, uh, they can have too much input. And there's a lot of input without an internal reference. Now, that's very dangerous because a lot of people that are like that, if, if, you, if you meet people that are like that, their meetings are very long. They're getting input from everybody without making clear decisions, okay? So that's when the external is too strong. They are getting a lot of input from everywhere. Now, in turn, in people that internalize decisions, all right, are people that know how to ask themselves first what they want. So they have a reference, okay? And this is the thing. A lot of people don't really internalize making decisions because of one thing. And this is very crucial. Uh, they, they, they're too busy. Now, this is just one generalization of a lot of people that don't get to internalize decisions because they're too busy running around. Busyness does rob clarity. Thank you very much. Ha, I was thinking of compass. Captain Jack searching for Peter Pan. A absolutely. Absolutely. So it's almost like we got to have our own compass to ask ourselves, what do we want? This is crucial. Okay. Then there's also people that are too internal. Hang on, huh? Two internal means, and you can find this out in your intelligences when we draw your AccuMatch uh, leadership intelligence report. Uh, those of you who have done it, and at the end, I'll share a bit about it as well. Some of you are very high internal. Okay, if you are too internal, what happens is that you become stubborn. My ideas, my thoughts are, 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 are what I'm happy doing. These people need to get more external input. So what is, the, what is the balanced, integrated way of making decisions, guys, is having first, when you're making decisions, having first an internal clarity. Write down what you want. If you want to ask someone what you want to have for dinner, what to have for dinner, ask yourself, what do you feel like having? All right. And then check with everybody else and then external input. Is that making sense? So internal, ask yourself first, actually, what do I want to have? Ask that first and then go external. This will help you to make sure that you're not just going with everybody else's flow. Because in business, some people can do that. They go with everybody else's flow. Who wants to do what? What campaign? Okay, we should focus on this customer, blah, 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 blah. And then not enough internal clarity. That's the problem. And the, the opposite as well, when there's too much internal uh, um, input without external checking. This is very, very crucial. Okay. So fantastic. Thank you very much. Does it mean for people who are very external are people who lack confidence. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Uh, uh, if I may, uh, confidence is, thank you so much, uh, Joe. If I may, when you look at confidence, and uh, guys, uh, thank you so much, Joe, for asking this question because, hey, gang, those of you who have questions, go right ahead and throw it in. If you have questions, I'll pick it right off the comment section. And coming back to uh, people that are very external, do they lack confidence? Now, um, yes and no. Okay. Now, I'll, I'll share with you. If you are lacking 
confidence. What is the meaning of confidence? Is confidence in doing something. So it's a doing matter, all right? So when I say doing, uh, there are times when we lack confidence in doing things because we don't have the skill and the ability to. Now, and if I may, as a business owner, there are areas in my business that I do lack confidence because I don't have the skill. For example, uh, I need to rely on my accountant uh, to make certain decisions. Okay, So yes, it's important if I'm not an accountant, it is important I admit that I have a lack of confidence in that area. That's important. It's similar to if I'm not feeling well and somebody asks me to drive for three hours, I will tell them I lack confidence to drive this long because I'm not well. It is important to admit that you lack confidence in that area. Does that, does that make sense? Okay. So confidence is about skill. It's about ability. Joe's question is fantastic because does it mean that uh, people who are external, they lack confidence? No. Uh, if you lack confidence, then yes, external, but it can also be an internal thing. People who lack confidence also lack the ability to ask themselves what they want. So they are going and asking everybody else. However, that doesn't mean that you are uh, uh, lack of confidence only applies to people that are uh, high in external. Uh, people that are lack confidence can also be high in internal. It's just that if you lack confidence and you're high in internal, you may not communicate that you lack the confidence. Does that make sense? So confidence is in gaps of skill. Okay, so very, very good. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Joe. Um, so when I say yes and no, yes, uh, external people do get more feedback. But people with a high internal can also lack confidence. It's just that they don't communicate it so much, all right? Ah, so this is something that you will be very clear of in um, uh, uh, how you lead your business, okay? Very good. Thank you very much. Those of you who are uh, jumping on, actually, we're seeing a lot more people jump on. Thank you so much, Joe, okay? And at this point, uh, between internal and external, yeah, it's very, very uh, crucial that when we make decisions, okay, whether they're decisions about business, decisions about employees, decisions about life, decisions about buying a new property, decisions on just anything, okay, the internal external balance is very important. But what I want to share with you is this. Um, uh, let me tell you a story, and and see, this is a this is a real story, and it's a, a basically how I made a decision to invest. Almost all my life savings, 150,000 ringgit. Those of you who, who know me, I was actually an ex-banker, investment and corporate banker. And so I had to make a decision. And you know, it's really scary. How many of you know what I'm talking about? It's pretty scary. You have a nice, comfortable, stable job and it's really stable. You go to work every day. You have a nice pattern. And I've got a good, I've, uh, I've got a good career ahead of me, many prospects. And then I decided to actually leave the bank, yeah, leave what I knew, what I studied to do, which is corporate finance, to actually run this business coaching company. So how many of you have to make such big decisions and it's pretty scary? Now, it's scary because you, you think you need to make a decision right away. But how many of you know what I'm talking about? Because sometimes when you have internal clarity you just know what your answer is somehow the universe presents more information to you to make you clear and clearer with your decision now so i said mm, actually i think i want to start this action coach business uh, and and i'm prepared okay so i've raised all the money I've, I've begged i've borrowed i've refinanced my house i've done all the necessary okay so now i'm ready to jump right in and what happened was and this is spookier eh? spooky almost creepier eh? but as i was making this decision i hadn't signed the dotted line yet as i was making this decision this decision my universe found three different people to ask me about action coach ask me about this business 
Now, then I went, hmm, these people are not related. So it's not like they're talking about. So my the first person that came to me was a gym buddy. Yeah, I used to go to fitness first. And then she said, hey, you know, have you heard of Action Coach? I'm going, mm, yeah, I just bumped into that website like a couple of days ago. Ugh. Okay, one person. Second person that brought it up was a corporate friend. So it was a corporate banker that asked me, hey, you know, one of the clients we bank with in our bank has this, has a coach. So he wasn't sure what kind of coach. I said, okay, never mind. So mm, coaching again, tap. So it was a tap. The third person that brought it up was a close friend. So I'm going, geez, is this the universe showing up? Now, this is the thing. When you have an internal pillar of making some of that decision, somehow don't rush into it. Don't go and bang, all right, where I got to sign the dotted line now, now, now. Wait a while. For those of us as entrepreneurs who are very high initiative, you're very high in, you know, and you don't wait, you know, and some problems do come from being rash. Yeah. And I'll talk about that from my own personal experience. I'm a pretty action oriented person. So what I've learned to do is I've started learning to wait. I let my universe bring information to me. Does that make sense? That's why the right decision does show up. So when we make decisions in order to not regret it, allow yourself to consume information. So guys, if you can take a look at my screen, I, I, I put that, I put the words in red, learn and experience. So give yourself some ways to learn and experience this big decision before you make it. And it will convince you or unconvince you. How do you know if you're on the right track, you feel good? When you're unconvinced, you start becoming unpersuaded more and more. And you're questioning, you're questioning. Ah, ah, ah. If that's happening, you know you need to look at, hmm, what are you expecting? And why do you feel this way? Absolutely, Emma. Thank you. Thank you. Very, very true. Brilliant, brilliant. Because that is how you let your universe bring information to you that can support your decision and you feel good you feel good about it or you may not all right so if i may those are the uh, indications that you can listen to most of the time we don't listen very well ladies and gentlemen if i may uh, because and and I'll, I'll 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 say this we don't listen very well because we're we're not um intentionally uh, paying attention to what we hear. This is very, very crucial. Thank you so much, Emma. When we have the internal clarity, the universe sends us the message just happened. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Thank you. Because if, if we know what we want, yeah, internal clarity, if we know what we want, the universe can look for signs for us. Does that make sense? It's the same with very simple, buying a new car, all right? Any of you bought a new car before, two, three weeks before you go and buy that car, what do you see off on the road? A lot. Tiba, tiba got so many Subaru. Tiba, tiba, so many BMW. Suddenly, so many Toyota Camry. Suddenly, so many uh, Mercedes. Wow. Wow. Is it because the, fa the factory suddenly produced so many Mercedes? Is that right? No. It's because when you have clarity about what you want, all right, your universe knows how to support it. The challenge is when we also don't know what we want, we're just relying on all the external input, then we become a bit lost. Lah. Like that also can, like that also can, this way also can. Does that make sense, guys? All right. Now, and, 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 when, and, 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 and when I talk about making decisions, a key thing that we have to be very cautious about, guys, is the, um, you see my screen there, got one big claw there, all right? If you look at this, my screen, you see this word called fear, F-E-A-R. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right. You see this big claw. F-E-A-R is uh, fear uh, from the word uh, uh, what stops us from making decisions, good or bad. And if I may, fear is an emotion. It's an emoci, it's an emotion. And so that emotion, uh, um, uh, if I can put the abbreviation, F-E-A-R, false expectations appearing real. Now, 
this is very very important because as you're making a big decision or a decision ah, any decision so usually when you make big decisions ah, you will hear more of this ah. you will hear this thing called i want you to write this down your inner voice oh okay your inner voice is very important for you to listen to some people call it your your intuition some people call it your your um, your angels talking to you blah 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 you know so it is intuition but what the technical term for this is inner voice oh kamaru zaman i'm glad you could join us yo halfway da okay but never mind better late than never that's okay love it love it you can go watch the replay nanti okay all right so i'm coming to the inner voice because when the inner voice talks to you now this is very important because when i first started my coaching business i tell you i was scared you know what i was scared about guys it, now you must imagine uh, i am a young business coach that has no entrepreneurial experience. All I had was my banking. I look at a few spreadsheets and I know how to tell you what the IPO listing requirements are with Busa Malaysia. I can tell you that kind of thing. But if you ask me, do have I got any ability to help businesses? Really? Oh, so takut lah. So what did I have, guys? Can you hear that? Now, then, uh, and as I went on, a lot of people were telling me, you know, they were fearful for me. So people that are very close to me, they'll come to me and say, Marissa, uh, are you sure you want to, are you sure you want to do that? You know, you are, uh, you are, you, you've got no experience, you know, maybe difficult when you go and talk to people, they will challenge you. How many businesses have you helped? You know, so my earlier years of being a coach was very challenging. Can you imagine all the inner voices that I had to deal with? And my question to myself, and I want to share this with you, my question to myself, and this is the question that I, I ask all my clients when they fear something, okay? The question is, every time you hear an inner voice uh, uh, discourage you from doing something, always ask, what is the proof? What is the proof? What is the evidence? Has there been any evidence of somebody that has said that, Marissa, I don't want to work with you because you don't look like you got enough white hair. <laughs> You're too young. Has there been any evidence? And then when I really think about it, actually, nobody has rejected or said anything to me about me being young. So what's all this about? It is all up in my, my head. And if I may, how did it get there? Now, that's why it's very important. How did it get there? I had to question. I had to dengar betul-betul. I had to listen so hard. How did it get there that I could doubt myself? Now, this is very important, which is why be cautious. Those of you who are on this live, I imagine your leaders, your entrepreneurs, your business owners. Now, remember this, what you say to the people that trust you, they trust you with their growth, what you say to them will forever plant seeds in their head and it will become their inner voice somehow. So for me, my inner voice was being designed by people that were mentoring me, that were that that planted some of those doubts in my head, which is why now as I train coaches, I develop coaches, it is important that I'm very, very careful what I say to them about planting seeds because it can become their inner voice. Yeah, But I also invest a great deal of time as I train coaches to believe in themselves, to know how to find the good, stop focusing on the doubt, and focus on the good, focus on the esteem, focus on the good, focus on what you can do and all the valuable properties that you bring to your clients instead of focusing on what if I cannot help your business? What if I make a mistake? What if all that is there, but those are inner voices that do not have proof. Be aware of that. That's why false expectations that look real, they only look real up here, but are they real? Does that make sense? Very, very good. Marissa, how do, how do actually the universe detect our internal? Wow, that is fantastic. Thank you so much, Emma. 
how how do we actually how does the universe actually detect our internal is that when we make decisions we already know what we want very simple very simple i am going to buy either a mercedes or a bmw example uh, and if you are more vivid you're clearer let me just use a car for now huh? i'm a bit material but let me use a car for now so you've got a bmw and a mercedes all right now in your universe because you already know what you're looking for how many types of model car models are there in malaysia oh you cannot count right but if you can zero it down to basically i want a car that can help me feel safe i want a car that can uh, help me to go far distance i want a car. you can you can you can narrow it down all right and you kind of have the internal so you kind of know your compass what you're looking for already right when you can do that you start filtering out so when the, the the answers are clear you start filtering out what you don't want because do you know that for the average human being how much information enters our system at any given time any given second any given minute there are millions of neurons that are coming in so for us to be um for us to protect ourselves from overload we need to filter so that's why we have these things called beliefs filter we have values so we know how to filter information so not all information is necessary but because we already know what we want the universe will present information based on what we want what we say is important to us what is valuable to us is that making sense that's how uh, uh, your universe can detect what you want because you are also clear what you want if you are not clear what you want don't expect the universe to bring it to you which is why a lot of people they say oh you know uh my i don't want to uh, i i don't want my business to go bust you know i don't want to go broke you know i'm so scared i cannot pay salaries the more you tell your brain what you don't want the thing about ota our brain is that it does not understand negation it doesn't understand not broke not bust no paying salaries it doesn't understand that it only understands the word that you give it that's why it's very important when you communicate with your brain you communicate with your brain what you want not what you don't want it will bring more of that does that make sense so it's very crucial how you talk to your brain i'll share a lot of that in next week Thursday 10 a.m. because we have to co-create and actually actualize this in our mind in our body so that we can create the change from internal so that's something I'll share with you a lot more but I hope this makes sense great question Emma love it love it love it wow when Del Marquez can you say I'm so glad that you're here thank you you left some really warm notes when feeling discouraged just go ahead and do it anyway <laughs> depends what you're doing yeah <laughs> good good thank you so much love it and because fear is so strong guys uh, this is um uh, uh uh very very uh crucial because sometimes fear is a very strong emotion and if i may uh and i know for some of us as business owners as leaders as well um uh we we sell you know we sell our products we sell our services all right Oh, awesome. Thank you, Emma. I'm glad you got it. That's a really awesome question by the way. Yeah. And so we sell our products. You know, we 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 want to get people to understand what we do so that they make decisions to engage with us, to onboard with us, right? So whether you're a consultant, whether you're selling cars, you're selling water filter, selling clothes, anything that you do. The first thing that you have to realize is that when people make decisions, all right? The decisions are a seesaw between logic and emotion, okay? As a seesaw. Uh and so let me ask you this question. Those of you who are here now, can I ask you this? How do people make decisions? Is it logical? If it's logic, put L, okay? Capital L. If you think it is emotion, give me a capital E. let me know tell me which one is it and which one do people mostly make decisions is it mostly logical or is it mostly emotional let me know what you think gang ah. 
What do you think? And there's no right and wrong. Very good. Thank you, Esther. E for emotion. That's how people make decisions. Very, very good. Guys, keep it coming. She D is L. Mm, logic. All right. Very, very good. Fantastic. Suto Xiang, L, logic. I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share with you some very powerful insights that I have been practicing with our clients and I've learned all along the way. And this is human psychology. When we understand this, thank you, Suto Xiang, logic, Carmen Lu, emotion, Emma, emotion, Karma Ruzaman, emotion, E, E, good, very good. Now, this is very, very powerful because when people make decisions, thank you very much, gang. When people make decisions, all right, if buying a car, mm, buying a car, let, let's go back to the car because it's, most of us drive, hey, we have cars. When buy, if buying a car is a logical decision, anything that will get us from A to B is good enough. Anything that will get us from A to B that has four wheels, yeah, two wheels also can. Yeah, I can get from here to here, ma. All right. Now, if I could, if I could, the 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 logic part is the part that we use our brain, the emotions that we use our heart. So how does it work? Those of you who said emotion, spot on, because how human beings bias psychology is people usually buy with emotion first which is why if you take a look at people buying cars if buying cars were logical anything with four wheels but why is it that we have the volvos why is it that we have the subaru the sporty people why is it that we have the mercedes the bmws the lexuses you know why is it that we have the four wheel drive trucks you know why because buying an object is not logical it is very emotional how many times emotional 80 20 80 percent emotion 20 percent logic now those of you who said logic also you're not wrong now now that's not now that, that's a very important part of the purchasing decision but think about this first most and more often people make the emotional decision first and then then they justify so the heart already knows what it wants the brain justifies it does that make sense so the emotion the emotion of keeping my family safe driving long distance so that i can see my family in the village in the kampong you know so those are all emotional nothing logical then once i know what i want mm, okay then i get it i get logical about can i afford the car can i afford the loan what is the interest what are the installments how much is my down payment what can i afford as a deposit blah 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 the logic part comes in after the emotional decision and logic is usually a justification for the emotional decision and if i may when you understand decisions that way huh you see when you understand decisions that way those of you who are business owners and people that are you know you're selling your business you're selling your product you know you're you're trying to reach out to more people remember reaching out with emotion versus logic a lot of people reach out with the logical part of their business their product their features their specifications versus the emotion because that's how decisions are made the emotion first now so and then i come back to very good emma depends on what you're selling either product or service thank you very much all right even product or service a lot of people are making emotional decisions first hence shopaholics based on emotion yeah shopaholic bye 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 still got limit still got limit okay let's go let's go <laughs> so emotion it can be very very powerful and then logic kicks in because there's a regret interesting thank you so much joe and if i may when we make decisions a very strong emotion is fear as you had seen before the inner voice which is why when we make decisions don't just consider one emotion in logic and emotion all right consider also what you gain what you love about the decision fear is the the negative emotion all right and the negative emotion is important don't get me wrong it's not bad that it's there because fear protects us does that make sense but we also need to uh acknowledge that there is also something we gain from making a decision therefore the love 
And the logic part, now these human beings are very good. When you make a decision, how many of you draw a line down the middle, pros and cons, all right? And then you see if the pro list is longer than the cons. Ah, the cons so little. Mm, okay, I should buy the I should buy the, the blouse. Oh, okay, I should buy that piece of furniture. Or if you see the cons is very long, hmm, all right? How many of you, when you do your logic, you do your pros and cons, even though the cons list is very long, sometimes you still go ahead with the decision even though the pros list is short how many of you know what i'm talking about if you look at the pros list the pros list is so short and this the cons list is so long but you say mm, but actually i really want that new handphone lah. bam you do it anyway why because that's the emotion part so if i may when you make a decision uh instead of just right and left draw a window Pros and cons, logic, emotion, love and fear. Consider your emotion as well when you are making decisions. So not just logic and emotion, but both positive and negative emotion and the pros and cons. That will allow you to make a very, very good decision. Uh, uh, allow the right information from the universe to come to you. Okay? Interesting. Good. How many of you guys uh, are enjoying the sharing so far? If you're enjoying the sharing, guys, uh, give me a quick heart shape. Give me a quick thumbs up. We'd love to hear from you. Give me an exclamation point if you're excited for more. And if you want more, tell me because I respond to all of your energy. <laughs> I'm responding to your energy, all right? Hardly do the pros and cons listing, especially during shopping time. <laughs> Especially when the decision is a, you know, it's a small one, you know, it's about buying some food or, you know, deciding which place to pergi makan. But sometimes the decisions are big ones. Then you really need a pros and cons, love and fear um, uh, uh, list. Yeah, very good. Thank you, Soto Siang. Yeah, Shidi. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much, Adrian. Um, and those of you who are enjoying it, please, you know, comment. Wow, exclamation point. Those of you who are really enjoying the session, taking lots of notes, I imagine, please uh, uh, give me your exclamation points, guys. You will show me that you're enjoying more, more, and more. <laughs> so those of you who are, um, as usual, um, guys, uh, some of you on this uh, Facebook Live, you've already done your leadership intelligence report. Excited? I decided to stay on for more. <laughs> Tell me more, more, more. <laughs> oh my gosh, this is so funny. Thank you very much, guys. All of your energy um, actually engages with me and everything that you share. Thought provoking, Jean, you're here. Awesome. Cynthia, wow, wow. <laughs> All of you quiet there. I didn't know you were on this live. I cannot see until you make noise. Huh? So all the noisemakers are showing up at the end. Huh? <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Love it. So for those of you who want to understand, so for, for example, your internal, your decision reference, you know, am I more internal? Am I more external? And some people are more internal or external or some the other way around. If you want to know more about yourself and also you want to know more about how you consume information, guys, uh, this is very important in making decisions, especially if you take a look at this list of 10. Our decision making is tugged and pulled. So we're pulling right and left from 1 to 10 because based on our programs, our intelligences, our leadership powers, yeah, we tend to make decisions that lean more to to parts that we're strong. So sometimes we go a bit more on autopilot. How many of you know what it means by uh, autopilot? Sometimes uh, we make decisions without being conscious that we're doing that. Yeah? Cannot make too much noise. Uh, uh huh, Cynthia. Uh huh. <laughs> so for those of you who really want to understand a bit more about yourself and how you come off in your business, yeah, um, we encourage you. We actually do debriefs, yeah. And if I may, through this leadership live series, only during the series. So I'm doing three. This is the second one. I'm doing the last one on Thursday next week. Last one, guys. All right, but. Uh, if I may, during this uh, live series, we're actually giving away uh, a very special offer. So if I may 
the debriefs for leadership intelligence we're helping people to understand their powers understand their struggles yeah we usually charge a thousand five hundred one five oh oh but we're giving it away only for during this series of three uh click on this link we'll give it to you debrief customized debrief along with your 26 page report only 280 ringgit only for the series so the last one i'm gonna do so for those of you who have friends you dah what you've done this report and it's amazing some of you have been mind blown by this session those of you who are you need to share this with your friends so that they take advantage of this all right because we're only going to let this offer run one more time on Thursday, today, and then Thursday, only one more time. So for those of you who want this, please, please, please um, uh, uh, click on the link over there uh, so that you can take advantage of this. Shidi, I think I'm more logic. That's why people say I couldn't go. <laughs> I couldn't go. Thank you so much for sharing. My decision-making skills are tested when I'm at the poker table or before I put in a sell or buy order for a stock. That's fantastic. Yeah, you shouldn't show all your hands, isn't it? Huh? <laughs> Thank you so much, Cynthia. That's so fantastic. And for those of you who um, missed 28th of May, we teach you how to coach. Yeah, And even on this uh, live, we actually have a lot of our clients here. Uh, and you know who you are. We have a lot of different clients that have been into our programs, whether it's a group coaching program, a one-to-one -one program. We've done a lot of that. Uh, but those of you who are interested to learn how to grow your leadership, to uh, learn how to lead better and to coach better yeah uh, this is a valuable skill that you may learn so please don't miss this out okay so guys i'm gonna get into the q a uh, anybody with questions i think you guys have been asking really awesome questions yeah gang uh, thank you for sticking around uh, right until the end uh, i try to finish a little bit more on time this time because uh, ye uh, yesterday we had so much of information how many of you enjoyed yesterday's live say yeah how many of you enjoyed today's live say yeah <laughs> if it is um helping you guys uh please give me a quick heart shape give me a thumbs up tag your friends on this live you know we're 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 hard at work doing a lot of lives uh, during this period of time guys because um we believe that education, uh, awareness will help more entrepreneurs uh, to know how to weather um, COVID-19 and the movement control order a lot better. So uh, myself and my team, yeah, um, Jean, uh, Elin, uh, and some of us that are in uh, Vietnam, Tina, Singapore, Felicia, all of us are actually hard at work doing so many lives, you know. And so we're really happy that I can have your time today to learn. And most important is that you took pages and pages of notes. That's very, very very important uh, and I love uh, something that one of you shared you know I just want to join the live because I want to get inspiration so that's great I'm glad so if you're inspired today uh, please please let me know give me give me a bit of a, a thumbs up so that I, or a shout out so that I know yeah yeah yesterday and yeah today Jean awesome yeah Carmen woohoo back to back ah uh, Carmen very good Shidi yesterday late but today oh today you joined the whole thing good so Tio Siang, yeah, not only yesterday and today, but I like it very much on every session. So I hope that we can bring more and more. And it's and it's an hour. It's an hour of amazing information uh, to help you go further in life and in business. And because one of the things that I believe in a business is great business, great life. Um, not just great business. And a lot of us as Asian entrepreneurs, we're very good at being in business and sometimes we lose that part of life. So that's why we bring a lot of the leadership intelligences to show you how you're showing up in your business. And it need not be that way. You don't have to give up your life. You don't have to give up your time, your energy to, be, to run a successful growing business. There are so many right ways of leveraging the business so that you can be a better leader, lead the team so that you can step back and do the things that you want to do. So that quality of life is very, very important. Thank you, Emma. Woohoo! Share this life. Woohoo! Thank you so much, Shidi. To sell the product, reach out to people by emotion. Thank you, thank you. Terima kasih. Very good, gang. Oh, awesome. Throw, throw your life. It's like charging. Oh, the live, the Facebook live is like charging your battery to 100%. Ha! 
Thank you very much, gang. So if there is uh, nothing else, gang, please log on. Hey, gang, I'm just going to share with you next. Oh, this is the last of the three-part change series, episode five, all right? Um, creating and sustaining the change from inside out. So the next session, Thursday, 10 a.m., we're going to talk about uh, how you create the change and how you keep the change. Because today we've made some decisions. We also know what to consider in making decisions. And now we want to keep the change. All right. So you don't want to miss that one. That's also going to be an amazing one, gang. Your lives are recharging session. Love your energy. Love your positive vibes. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, guys. I want to invite all of you to join us uh, Thursday. And I hope to see you guys again. Uh, if you want to get your leadership intelligence reports done yeah myself and my coaches hope to see you as well don't rush be patient universe will tell you okay yes universe will tell you a lot of things all right good very good thank you very much guys i'm very very happy to be with you today uh, you guys have been awesome love you guys as always your engagement warms my heart as i come out here and we share so many new things with you so uh, have a great uh, Friday, TGI Friday. Have a great Friday. Have a great weekend. And I will see you next week. Take care and bye for now.